Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are gonna do a bit of a review, you know, make sure all of our stuff is synced in well to our system in our brain. And so what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned an instance versus a class, constructors, fields, parameters, data types, return types, print statements, arrays, dictionaries, recursion, binary numbers. We've learned a lot of stuff. So like, be proud of yourselves. We're one third into the series and you guys, you're doing great. And so we are just gonna make a little fun program today to kind of, you know, jog everything, make sure we've got everything. And if you don't have anything, maybe try some of the challenges you know, watch some videos again and figure it out. And so as always, we are gonna open NetBeans here and hit enter, open it up. And we are gonna be making a library catalog. And so what is that? Well, basically, what do you do? You go to a library and you look online, you see what books are available, you know, that's what we're gonna be making. We are gonna be making something where like a user can check in a book, check out a book, you know, return a book, that type of stuff. We're gonna have like a database of all of our books. So well, it's not really a database, but you know, it'll hold all of our books. And we'll be able to tell like if a book is late, like if you returned a book and it's late, oh, we know, we know you owe us some money and we'll print out like, oh, you owe us some money. And then we will also be able to tell like the user, oh, that book's gone, it's already checked out stuff like that. And so we are going to be using multiple classes for this. That's not something we've done before, but we're going to do it. And so first we got to close all this other stuff. And we are going to create a new project. So we're going to do file, new project, you know, set it all up. Next, we're going to call this library catalog. And again, we're going to put it right on our desktop and it'll load. And we'll have this library catalog class. And so we're going to have stuff in this class but I think it might be easier if we do our book class first. And so, like I said, we're gonna have multiple classes. And so we're gonna have a class, a thing that represents our library catalog. It's gonna have properties that's like how long you can check out, stuff like that. Properties, you know, our book collection, how we have our books, stuff like that. And that will be like the whole series of books. What do we do with them? And then an individual book will have like the title, ISBN number, you know, page count maybe, and that's what that'll be. And so to put this more into context, we'll just make a new class. And so you'll do control click on your little package, do new, and you have Java class. And now you know how to make a new class. And we are gonna call this a book because we're creating a book. This book can be a magazine, whatever you want it to be. And there will be one day where I go into my preferences and I change it so I don't get these comments. So we're in our little class, okay. So what represents a book here? Well, a book's gonna have a title, so we'll have the string title. And you know, do a little semicolon there because we don't know what the title is yet. Then we'll have an int page count, how many pages are in the book. Then we'll have an int ISBN, and you know, that'll be you know, the ISBN number. And then we'll have a Boolean, and this will say whether or not the book's checked out or not. This will be something that's monitored by the library catalog. It'll set, you know, our book's checked out, so we should change that Boolean that we made and stuff. And so we'll do a little comment here and say whether or not it is checked out. And we'll change this to the book. And then we need to say our variable name will be is checked out. We don't need to set it yet. And then we'll say int day checked out. And we'll set this to negative one to start because it hasn't been checked out yet. And this will only be checked out whenever we change is checked out. And so to review, these are our properties fields. This is like what the book is, what defines the book. We have the data type here, the property name here, you know, the variable name, what, what is it? It's a title, it's a page count. What, what are we calling this thing that's a string? And what are we associating it with? That's what these properties are. They tell us what our book is. Okay, enough of that. We are gonna make a constructor and the constructor will be how we make our books. How do we create the instance of our book, which will be a single individual book with its own page count, its own number, its own ISBN versus, you know, here we have the whole class of how do we even make a book? Yeah, so that's what we're doing. And to make a constructor, if you kind of remember, you do public and that means anyone can access it, book, open close parentheses and then we do open close curly brackets and then inside book we put whatever parameters we want to set when initializing a book and so you can't just create a book without a title so we're gonna have an int and we'll say book title so that'll be the title of the new instance book that we're creating and again it'll have a page count and so we'll say book page count and then it'll have an ISBN int book ISBN, and you don't have to name them book that, but to kind of make it clear, I'm gonna be doing that that way. 
And here we have the name of the method, the data type, and then the name of the parameter that we are going to be using for the data type. And so this whole thing is the parameter. The data type of the parameter is int. The name of the parameter is book title. And so that's how we'll access it within our function. What else do we need? Well, nothing. Is checked out will start off as false, and then we'll change it to true later on if it becomes checked out. Everything will start checked into the library initially. And so what are we going to do here? Well, we'll set this dot title, meaning the title of this object of this book that we're creating. We'll set it to book title, which is the thing we passed in. Makes sense. Then we'll do this dot page count, you know, equals the book page count because that's what we entered. Then we'll have this dot ISBN. That'll be an int and that'll be our book ISBN. And we've made an error, you know. You know, sometimes you think things and they're wrong. So <laughs> we're going to change this to a string because book titles are strings, not ints. I was just, you know, out of my mind. And what else are we setting inside of this constructor? Well, we need to set is checked out to something and we'll set it to false because nothing's going to start checked out. And then that can be there. We could set it up here. We could set it down here. It doesn't matter. But yeah, that is it. I'll put a little comment here. That's like the constructor because that's what this is. And so what do we do next? We set getters and setters. And so if you've kind of gotten the idea of how you make a class, what you do is first you think, okay, what properties does this class have? And so we'll say properties, fields, global variables, because that's the stuff up here. Globals, no, global variables. That's like, that's what you start off. You think, okay, what does a book even have in it? It has a title, it has a page count, what does it have? And then you make a constructor, okay, what do I want to have in this book when I create it? I want it to be, when it's initialized, what do I want to initialize it with? Well, it needs to have a title, page count, ISBN. Are there properties, you know, I want to set no matter what. I want to set is checked out to false, stuff like that. And then the next thing you do is you create getters and setters. And so getters will be getting all these variables and we'll write them out right here. We'll do a public get title, open close parentheses. We'll have this return a string. And we're going to do this for a bunch of stuff. So we'll just, you know, copy copy, 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 yay, copy, paste, and it'll error because you can't have that. And then we'll say get page count, you know, getting all our things, this will be an int. Then we'll say get ISBN, so we'll have an int there as well. Then we'll have another of these, scrolling down here. We will implement these later. Implement means putting in the code that's inside the function. So right now we're just kind of saying the signature of it, which is kind of like, oh, I'm going to have a function that's get title, get ISBN, get is checked out here. And this will actually return a Boolean, you know, because it's a Boolean, you know, that's, that's what it is. And then we are going to have for our last variable, we'll say get date checked out and that'll be an int. We'll say get day checked out and that'll be when you know, it's checked out from the library. And so we can just implement these, you know, return this dot. You get all these wonderful things, day checked out. Then you'll say return this dot is checked out. Then you'll say return this dot ISBN. Oops, so we make mistakes. ISBN right there. Then we'll say return this dot page count. And we will go up here, return this dot title. And so what will this do? Well, say you create a book, book Harry Potter is the title, has billion dollar, you know, pages, has the ISBN number of just nines, that's Harry Potter. Well, what if I don't know that? I know the fact it's Harry Potter, I know the book, okay, how do I get page count? Well, you just call the method get page count and it'll return, you know, a billion because it's a lot of pages. And so that's why we have these getters and setters. They're instance methods which allow you to get certain properties of the instance, let you know their values. And so we will call this instance methods because that is what they are. They're giving you the value of certain properties within the instance. And then we have setters. And so setters are going to be used to, you know, set the value of our properties of our fields within our class. And so the only thing that we're ever going to want to set is our is checked out. And so we'll say public void set is checked out. And then we'll say boolean here and it will say checked out. And it'll tell us, okay, are we checking out? And we actually could call this is checked out if we wanted to because this will tell us, okay, what do I want to change is checked out to? So we could actually call it new 
is checked out because it's going to be the new value of it. And then we'll say int day checked out and this will be the actual day it was checked out. And we could actually add current to this to make it a little bit clearer. So now we have this thing. How do we implement it? Well, we are going to set is checked out to be the certain thing. And mu is here. What was I trying to say? New. <laughs> mu, mu. No. Okay. So we're setting is checked out. So we'll have this dot is checked out equals new is checked out. And we also will say our day checked out in here. And so we'll create another setter just to make it a little bit cleaner. And we'll make this private void. And we'll say set day checked out. And then we'll have a little int in here, which would be int day. And then we'll set this dot day checked out equals day. And then because it's private, we can only access it in here. Let me pull this guy down a little bit. So that like library catalog can't access this. It can only access it through this public function. It won't ever be able to call set day checked out unless it's calling it from this public method. And so we'll say set day checked out. And then we'll put the little current day in here. And that will set that for us. Again, spacing things out, always a good thing in computer science. You never want to have too many lines of code inside of one thing. So now we have our getters and setters. And that's all we need for this class. The book is just something to keep track of all of our books and what's in it. So that's it. That was pretty easy. All right, OK. So we go to our library catalog. And notice they're in the same package. And so it's going to know, you know that books exist in the world of Java because it's in the same package here. And so we are going to add some properties to our library catalog. The first one is going to be like our book collection. And then we're going to have like a current day, like how we keep track of time in our library catalog. Then we'll have like the length of our usual checkout period. Then we'll have an initial late fee, which is like, OK, you're late. You have to pay 50 cents or something. And then for each day after, you'll have a different late fee, which will be stored in another property. And so let's just write these out right here. And we are going to create a dictionary. And so a dictionary is going to hold all of these books for us. And so the book title will actually be the key. So the user is going to be like, hey, I want Harry Potter. And then, you know, the computer is going to be like, oh, OK, Harry Potter. Harry Potter's a key. Let me go find that book inside of this dictionary that I've created. That's the book collection. How do we create dictionaries? Well, we'll do map open caret string comma book because book is going to be the key and then we're going to say book collection equals new hash map open caret string comma book and book should be capitalized because it's the name of a class and then open close parentheses and then semicolon here and then we have to import things you know importing importing here all is good. And our book is recognized because, again, it's in the same package here. So we don't have to import anything, which is awesome. Then we are going to set int current day. And this will be you know, the current day. It's going to start off at day 0, and it'll go off into infinity. And then we will increment the day as the user. Or we could add something time-wise. We could say wait, and then increment the day. Wait, and then increment the day, and create a method that does that. But that's for another day, another time in the future. Cool. OK. Next thing, we are going to create int length of checkout period, which is how long you can check out a book before it's late. And we'll say that's seven days. And then we'll have our late fees. We'll have double initial late fee equals 0 0.50, so 50 cents. Again, initially, you're late, dude. You owe me at least 50 cents. And then we'll have a late fee for each additional day that you you know, don't return the book. And so we'll have double fee per late day equals $1. There we go. And those are our properties. And so we'll have properties, fields, global variables up here. And then what do we do? We create, you know it, a constructor. So we will do a public, what's a constructor? We do library catalog because we're creating an instance of our library catalog, a new library. So what do we want in this thing? We want a book collection. So we'll have a map that goes from string to book. And then we'll have collection. We'll add a comma. Then we'll say double length of checkout period. And so we can set the length of the checkout period if we don't want it to be seven. Then we'll have a double initial late fee. Again, giving us the ability to set it. And then double 
fee per late day. Now some of these are already defaults and so to make it a little bit easier we are also going to create a second constructor public library catalog and you can do this if you want um, usually it's better to just have one constructor because it gives you less flexibility. Why would you want less flexibility as a programmer? Well, it means there's only one way to create things. You have to create things with this one constructor. And so if there's something you're keeping track of in your constructor, it might be helpful. But for something like this, we want more flexibility because we want more ways to customize our library catalog. So it's a little bit better to have two constructors because we can say, oh, we just want the default, you know, length of checkout period, all of the stuff versus oh, I want to set everything, why would I just set it to the defaults? Why don't I just have a constructor for that? Kind of makes sense, a little bit talking a lot. Okay, let's code. So we have these parentheses. We're obviously going to have to enter a collection, so we'll say map, open carrot, string, comma, book, and then we'll say collection. And we should implement these things, put the code inside that's doing the work. And to do that, we will do this dot book collection equals collection, and then we will do this dot book collection again in the second method here equals collection. We'll say this dot length of checkout period equals length of checkout period. This dot initial late fee equals initial late fee. This dot fee per late day equals fee per late day. And you know, a lot of the times I make, these are simple mistakes I'm making as I'm talking to you. We have a double here and end here, so it's gonna you know, freak out, so we can just change this to an end, and all will be good. Data types, crazy annoying, but you need to make sure they all match up to their specific variable. If I set something to current day and it's an int, everything else that I set it to and what it should have been before, always an int. And if I don't want it to be an int, I create another variable to deal with that later. Now we do getters and setters. I know this isn't interesting yet. We'll get there. I promise. This is like the maintenance you have to do always before you, you know, actually get to do the fun code. So we have our constructors and then we'll do getters, setters, and we'll just put getters here. And so our getters, you know, we're getting all the things. So we'll do public int get to current day, open close parentheses, curly brackets, and we'll just copy this and implement later because I feel like I do it faster that way maybe. I don't know, we'll see. And then we have it here. I would just skip the video and have you guys do this, but you know, I hate pausing a video and like, you know, having to do the work. And so we have get book collection and this will return a map of strings and books. And then we have our get book, which will return a book and then we will have our get initial late fee, get initial late fee, which will be a double, 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 double. And then we will have our double, which will be get fee per late day. And then we'll have a thing in here that says get the length of the checkout period. So we'll say get length of, with a capital O, checkout period. And there we go, that's done, except we have to implement. So we'll say return this dot current day. And then we have to add that semicolon. Return this dot book collection. And notice it already knows what I want to do because I have the return type here. We will come back to get book. We will do return this dot length of checkout period. And then we will do return this dot initial late fee. There we go, keep going down return this dot fee per late day. There we go. And back to our get book. In our get book, we are gonna have a parameter that's a string and it's gonna be the book title because we're gonna retrieve books by their book title. And then we can access our get book collection. So we can do get book collection and then we can do dot, see what we have here. We have get and so object key and then we can put book title and that will be what will retrieve our book and so we have this book title here and we will just return what this returns so we'll get our book with the book title and return it and that will give us our book with that title awesome setters super quick i know it's kind of annoying but you know have to do it programmer maintenance here we go 
public, void, next day. That's just gonna do our current day plus plus. That's how we get, keep going to the next day. We keep going, public, set day, int day, open, close, curly bracket, and then we'll have current day equals day. And so here, we have to add void. And here, we can either go like next day, next day, next day, or we can like set the day right there and then. Now we get to the fun methods, the fun, 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 fun methods. And so these methods are gonna be the checkout and return and, sorry, the book's already checked out methods. And so let's just, you know, write out the signatures. And so we'll say instance methods here because these are also instance methods because they don't have static in front of them. Static methods are class methods. Notice static here, that's class method. And we are going to say public void checkout. And this will take the string of the title because you need to know what you're checking out. What book is it? I need to know the title of it. And then we were gonna do public avoid return. And this will take again string title because you need to know what book are you returning. And we can't call methods return. This is a really important point. We cannot call methods return because return is a keyword. And so I cannot call this new either, right? Yeah, it's gonna error. And let's see what this error is. Yeah, identifier static, you know, you doesn't, doesn't know what's happening. And so we have to call this return book. And then we can say check out book to, you know, make them parallel. Then we will have that. And I feel like I need to close something. Nope, we're good. We are good to go. And we are gonna implement these later. We have one more method to add, public void. Sorry, book already checked out. And we will input the book here. And so that will be for later. And the first thing we're gonna implement is checkout book. And so we can do book equals get book title. And we are gonna have to put book in front of this. And so here we have the data type, then we have the name of the variable that we're gonna use to represent this book. And then we get the book using our getter and then we have the title. Okay, we have the book, now what do we do? Well, we have to check if it's checked out. How do we do that? Well. The book has a variable in here called is checked out. Amazing. Okay. So now we can do if book dot get is checked out. Beautiful. Getters and setters, man. They make everything so much easier and it just comes so naturally. And then, so it's already checked out. This returns true. Checked out. So then we want to call, sorry, book already checked out. And we have access to the book because we have book right there. And if we add ed and then we say our book inside here, that will get called. And then we'll put an else. And so if the book's already checked out, we'll do this. Otherwise, we're doing this and we'll check out the book. And so we'll say book.set is checked out to true. And then we'll have the current day in here, you know, automatically fills it. So nice, NetBeans. And so we check it out today, current day. We do want to check it out so it's set to true. And then we'll print out something nice for the user. We'll say system.out.println. You just checked out. And then we'll do a little plus here, title. And then we'll do a little space. And we'll say period here. And then we'll say it is due on day. Then we'll do a space, a plus here, enter. Then we'll say open parenthesis get current day plus and then we also want to get the length of the checkout period because that's how long you know it can be checked out for checkout period so the current day plus this and we have to have these open close curly brackets because they're methods and they're not just variables and then we'll add a plus open period, there we go, add a semicolon. So if we print out Harry Potter on day five, it'll say, you just checked out Harry Potter. It is due on day, say the checkout length is seven days. And so if we check it out on day five, due seven days later, it's due on day 12, and there we go. Now we'll go to our return book and we'll say book, book equals get book title. And then we will get, you know, how many days late is it? It may be no days late, it may be checked in early. We gotta get this date, and so how do we do this? We do int days late equals current day minus book dot get day checkout. There you go. And so we'll know what day it's checked out plus get length of checkout period. Close parentheses. There we go. Add a semicolon. 
change this to a capital O, and there we go. So what is this doing? Well, say our day currently is 12 minus, and then how many days is the checkout period length? Well, say it's seven. Again, we checked it out on day five. Five plus seven equals 12. The current day is 12, so then we'll have 12 minus 12. It'll equal zero, we'll be all good. But if it's positive, say it's day 15, and then I do minus five, which is the day I checked out, and then seven. 15 minus 12 will equal three. It's late because it was supposed to be like returned on day 12. And so if it's positive, it's late. If it's negative, it's returned early. And if it's, you know, at zero, it's returned on time. So we only care if it's returned late because if it's returned late, then, you know, late fees because blah. So how do we do late fees? Well, we can just print something out to the user and hopefully they'll pay, you know, people are good. So we'll say if days late is positive, greater than zero, then we are gonna print out system.out.println. It means they're late, so we'll say you owe the library, and then we'll do a little dollar sign here, and then we'll say plus, and then we'll do a little equation here. It's gonna be get initial late fee, because it's late, so you're gonna have this initial late fee that you have to pay, plus you are also going to have to pay days late times get fee per day. So if you're five days late, you're gonna have to pay whatever this fee is times five plus the initial late fee. So we'll have late day, open close parentheses, plus open quote, because your book is, add a little space there, have a little enter, you know, make it all formatted and pretty, plus days late, plus open quote, days overdue. So what is this saying? We'll add a period here. It's saying, if it's late, you owe the library and then it gets the initial fee plus like how many days late times the late fee day. And so it'll say you owe the library this amount of money because your book is due and then it'll print out five days overdue. And there we go. What if it's returned on time? Well, we print out nothing. Or if we wanted to, we could print out, you know, system.println book returned. Thank you. There you go. But no matter what, the book is returned to the system, so we do want to do something, which is change the book so it's not checked out anymore. So we'll say book.set is checked out, and then we will say false, and then we can just set this to negative one because it, it's not, it's still here. We're all good. We are all good to go. So what about this last method down here? Well, it's just going to print out a simple printf statement. We're going to just do system.out.println, sorry comma, space, plus, book, dot, get, title, open, close, parentheses, plus, space, quote, is already checked out, enter, it should be back on day, plus, open, parentheses, book, dot, get, day, checked out, open, close, parentheses, plus, get, length of, checkout, period, open, close, parentheses, and then semicolon here. And then add a little plus here as well so that we have a nice clean sentence. And so what does this say? Sorry, Harry Potter is already checked out. It should be back on day, and then it calculates the day based on like the day checked out, the fifth, length of the checkout period, seventh, and so it'll be back on day 12th. And it'll say that no matter what day it already is. And so we'll hit enter here, you know, give us some space. And there we go, that's our program. We are done, we are good to go. You can add more things to this program. You could add like a reserve, you know, thing. So you can reserve books and if something's already reserved, you can't check it out. And then you could also add a type of like UI so that like if I just wanna do a user interface to where I can check out books right here in the console, then you can do that as well. And so I'm not gonna go and mess with this program now because this video is already pretty long and so, but this, is how you would set up your program and then you would run it in your main here. And you can only have one main between all of your classes. Like here, it's not gonna have a main because you are actually gonna run the application here. You could run it from book, but it wouldn't make much sense because library catalog is what is like bringing everything together. You're not having your library catalog in your book. Kind of makes sense. And so what you could do here is you could create like a hash map of books, and so to do that, I'll just write it really quickly down here. We'll say map string book is a new, I don't know, book collection. There we go. And then we'll add things to our book collection by doing book collection dot put, and then we'll say put 
Harry Potter, space here, and then we will say we'll have to create a new book, and so we'll do a new book here as well. We'll say book Harry equals, and then we'll put Harry as our book here, and then we'll have to use our constructor for our book, and so we'll say new book, and then we'll look at our constructor. We need a book title, page count, ISBN, and so we'll have our book title, Harry Potter, and then we'll have our page counts, which will be a lot of numbers. Make sure they're all numbers, not too big. And then we will have our ISBN number, which will just be a bunch of nines. And you could check even if that's a real ISBN. I don't know. So we have a one book in our book collection here. And we have to initialize this to be a new hash map. So we have to do new hash map string book. And then we have open close paren. There we go. Semicolon. All is good. So now it's in our book collection. And now we can create a new library catalog by doing library catalog. And then we'll say lib equals new going up to our constructor here. And we'll just put in our collection because we have that flexibility, flexibility catalog. And then we'll say Harry, you know, but that's not the name of our book collection, book collection, because that's what we want to set our book collection to. And we need to spell catalog right, if that's the way you spell it. And then inside of here, we're going to do lib dot. We can check out these methods. We'll check out Harry Potter. Potter. Then we'll do like a next day, lib dot next day, lib dot next day, and then we'll do like lib.checkout book again. We'll try checking out Harry Potter again. We shouldn't be able to. And then we'll do lib.setDay17. We'll set it to day 17. And in this world, we'll have like 0 to 17. Like you go from 0 to infinity in your days. There is no Monday, Wednesday. It's just you start at day 0 and you keep going. And then we'll say lib.return Harry Potter. Harry Potter, and then we will do a lib.checkout book. Harry Potter, here we go. Let's save this and run it. Hopefully this works. Here we go, it says you just checked out Harry Potter. It is due on day seven, zero. We start on day zero, zero plus seven, seven. Sorry, Harry Potter's already checked out, which makes sense because we only passed by two days. It was day two, Harry Potter's still checked out. It should be back on day seven, makes sense. And then we returned it on day 17, 10 days late. 10 times 1 does equal 10 plus the 50 cents. So we do owe $10.50 because we are 10 days overdue. And then because we returned it, now we can check it out. And then it says you checked it out. And so it's due on day 24. 17 plus 7 equals 24. All is good. And again, you could make the system interactive if you wanted to expand on this project. And we'll go up here and add a little space because that's crazy annoying to me. We'll run it again. It'll work. I hoped you enjoyed this video. We talked about a lot today. We did a lot of reviewing about what like instance versus class was, properties, return types, data types, printing things to the console, creating classes, like working with multiple classes and how it all fits together, getters and setters, constructors, properties, how you even go about making a program, stuff like that. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.